All right. Well, thank you for being here. Earlier, I had the pleasure of escorting Governor Cooper, Dr. Oakley, and Leah Carper on a tour of a few classrooms and one of my learning hubs. I am extremely proud of the hardworking students, staffs, and families that I serve here. At this time, I want to extend a warm welcome to Northern Guilford High School English teacher and reigning 2022 North Carolina Burroughs Welcome Fund Teacher of the Year, Leah Carper. I have more remarks, I have more remarks, have more remarks. Known as a student's teacher, Carper emphasizes student engagement in her classroom as one of her highest priorities. She says she takes her cues from her students and what they need and tailors her approach to what works best for them. Carper has been an English teacher at Northern High since 2016. She started her teaching career in 06 at Western Guilford High School after earning a bachelor's degree in English education from the University of North Carolina Greensboro. She also holds a master's degree in educational leadership from Queens University of Charlotte. As North Carolina Teacher of the Year, she, spent, she has spent this school year traveling the state as an ambassador for the teaching profession, as supported by the Burroughs Welcome Fund and the North Carolina Department of Education. And it is with great honor I introduce Leah Carper, one of my dearest, dearest friends, to the podium. Welcome to Nighthawk Nation, everybody. We're so happy to have you here. Um, it's an honor to have you all in the school that I love, in the district that built me. I truly love Guilford County Schools. Serving as the North Carolina Teacher of the Year has given me countless opportunities to observe, to grow as a, as a professional, and to, to learn. To give you an idea of like what I do, I'm gonna talk you through a few of the things I've done in just the last two weeks. I've driven over 2,000 miles, I've visited four unique school districts. I've trained 27 beginning teachers at NCAT and spoke at the beginning teacher of the year ceremony. I interviewed future teachers um, that were all vying for the North Carolina Teaching Fellow Scholarship. I published an op-ed on the importance of providing school meals at no cost to families. I contacted eight legislators so that we can do something cool together. Stay tuned. Um, I virtually met with all of the state teachers of the year from all over the country to prep for some advocacy work that we're going to be doing on the national level. I organized a statewide teacher leadership council meeting. I fed a pig a marshmallow at a local school district and I learned how to juggle. There you go. <laughs> I learned how to juggle at a at a Guilford County Elementary School where that um, educator was teaching his students the importance of dexterity and how dexterity and motor skills help with literacy skills. It was very cool. That's just a taste of some of the things that I do as the North Carolina State Teacher of the Year. And because I get to do so many wonderful things, I am a witness that North Carolina is doing wonderful things for education. Gaining this knowledge gives me the opportunity to share this information with people from not only our state, but also the country. And when I tell people of the great things that we are doing in our state, people say to me, man, North, North Carolina is leading the way. They're the leaders in education. And I have to admit, that gives me so much hope and so much pride in North Carolina. North Carolina is a leader in education on the national level. We are leaders because we celebrate the diversity of our students and we see diversity as an asset in our classrooms. We are leaders for advocating for the emotional well-being of our students and our staff. We are leaders for recognizing the importance of providing safe spaces for our students to learn and to grow. And we are leaders for providing future-focused academic programs that support students gaining durable skills that will ha help them in any job opportunity that they have in their future. It is because of the immense passion and professionalism and expertise of our North Carolina educators that we are the leaders in education. But it's my hope that North Carolina will be a leader in education in all aspects. And for that to happen, North Carolina must also become a leader when it comes to educator support and compensation. Thank you. We have 1.5 million public school students in our state who deserve this investment. When we're investing in them, we are investing in their future, but we're also investing in the future of North Carolina. 
Thank you so much for being here today. I'm just so happy to have you. I feel so much Nighthawk pride. Woo! <laughs> it is my honor to introduce to you our current wonderful superintendent of Guilford County Schools, the one and only Dr. Whitney Oakley. She always brings the energy, um, every time. But thank you, Ms. Carper. We are so, so proud of you, but also love welcoming you back home to Northern Guilford High School. Um, we greatly appreciate your advocacy for our students, our teachers, and our staff across the state. I want to just express my appreciation to Governor Cooper for visiting Guilford County today and his commitment to supporting public education as he released his recommended budget yesterday that included historic investments in public education, such as increasing teacher pay to 16th in the nation up from 32nd and first here in the Southeast with a starting salary of at least $46,000 a year. Here in North, yes. Here in North Carolina, a teacher who's entering the field for the first time with zero years of experience makes the same as an Uber driver here in North Carolina. And while those are important, think about the credentials that are needed to be a classroom teacher. The budget also calls for a 9.5% pay increase for non-certified personnel, including bus drivers, custodial staff. GCS just recently finished a, a salary study that shows that it will take us just here nearly $40 million to pay our 4,000 classified staff at a market rate. $40 million. I want to make sure everybody heard that to get to market rate for our classified staff. So I just can't say thank you enough for making this a priority. Yesterday marked three years since we had to close schools due to the pandemic. When the pandemic first came knocking, I hope that we can all remember all of our hardworking staff, including our bus drivers, our school nutrition staff, our nurses, our principals, our teachers, our district staff, who all rolled up their sleeves and buckled down right then, working together to make the swiftest transition to remote learning. Within just 10 days of school closure, our teachers had to shift to online instruction, upending more than 350 years of in-person instructional practices. We also served more than 30,000 meals each day. A whole lot happened, and it wasn't that long ago, so it's important to not lose sight. Then, when they realized the long road ahead, staff worked tirelessly to help students regain this kind of sense of normalcy without sacrificing their own health and safety. Our staff kicked it into high gear to help students return to school with numerous safeguards and safety precautions in place. But then at the peak of Omicron, we were operating with one third of our bus drivers. And we also experienced hundreds of vacancies. And I think, you know, we had classified vacancies, bus driver vacancies, teacher vacancies. And there were times that we had 400 teachers out during that peak of Omicron. We have asked a whole lot of our teachers and our staff. We always have, but particularly now. They've gone the extra mile and they've never given up on our students. The pay increases here and now is the least that we can do. While we have overcome many, many difficult challenge, th challenges, there's a long road ahead in this recovery work. People keep asking me when it's gonna be over and when we're gonna stop talking about it and we have a long way to go. I think we all know that this is the most consequential decade that we have for our children. We need our teachers and our classified staff to stay with us, to stay in the field and help us continuing educating the students here in our communities. I'm grateful to Governor Cooper, our elected officials and community leaders in this room for their leadership over the past few years and for prioritizing public education. Now more than ever, our students need champions like us who continue to show up for them and not slow down, not giving up and not losing hope, but continuing to press forward even when it's hard. The future of our students and our community just depends on it. Now it's my honor to introduce Governor Cooper. Governor Roy Cooper was born and raised in Nash County where he attended public schools and worked summers on the family farm before receiving undergraduate and law degrees from UNC Chapel Hill. He practiced law for 18 years in Rocky Mount 
where he and his wife, Kristen, raised three daughters. Governor's Cooper, Governor Cooper's mother was a public school teacher, English and French. Go Yay. English teachers. Um, yes, which helped cement his deep commitment to public education. He taught Sunday school and tutored students in local schools during this time. Cooper entered public service in the North Carolina State House and State Senate, where he fought to raise teacher pay and reduce class sizes and wrote North Carolina's first children's health insurance initiative. Cooper also, as our 75th governor here in North Carolina, is working to make lasting investments in our future. He wants to ensure that North Carolinians are better educated, healthier, and more prosperous for generations to come. Since taking office, Governor Cooper has worked to create thousands of new jobs, including bringing new employers to our communities, including Toyota, who's represented here today. He is focused on boosting public education, tackling the opioid crisis, revitalizing our rural communities, and making sure that North Carolinians have the training to fill better paying jobs that require more skills, like we just saw in our classrooms. Governor Cooper has also underscored the need for continued recovery funding and work after Hurricane Matthew devastated parts of our state. Governor Cooper believes that when we work together, we can build a North Carolina that works for everyone. Welcome. Well, thank you, Superintendent Oakley, and thank you, uh, Principal Galliotti and uh, Leah Carper, we are so proud of you and uh, glad that uh, you are getting to go across the state and spread your infectious smile and love of public education. So grateful for our local leaders, Chairman Austin, and our school board members and members of the city council, both Greensboro and Highs Point. Grateful for you. Senator Michael Garrett has been a champion for public education in the state senate. I'm grateful for you and your service and your friendship. And, and Alan Duncan is one of the best and most respected lawyers in the state, but he gives his time uh, to the State Board of Education as vice chair, and Alan, I'm grateful for that. When I was recruiting Toyota to come to North Carolina, and specifically here to the triad, uh, one thing they promised me is that they were going to be involved in the community, involved in education. So we got the president of Toyota, Sean Suggs, <laughs> sitting right here, keeping that promise uh, to, to us, and in fact, working to make sure we've got that pipeline of students who can leave Northern Guilford High School with their Nighthawks shirt on, yes. and can go right to that Toyota plant and make 50 grand, 60 grand, you know, in advanced manufacturing with a credentialing with no student debt, support your family, can make even more decisions about what you want to do with your life. But that's the kind of things that can happen in our public school when our businesses and our schools are working together. So, Sean, I was there with my hard hat with you on the Toyota site on Monday. You actually let me blow up some rocks, which I appreciate it. <laughs> I got that video I'm showing around with my, with my hard hat and uh, am excited about, uh, about that. Uh, I, I have with me my education staff, Jeff Coltrane, uh, my education advisor, and uh, uh, Dyson Person, who's my uh, teacher advisor. They've been working so hard. Azeev, thank you for your working as an intern th this year. I, I am so excited about the potential of our public schools. I'll be the first to recognize the challenges. We got 5,000 teacher vacancies in our state. There's a reason for that. We need to treat our educators with more respect and we need to give them better pay and more support. When you think about where students come from and many of the challenges they face we expect our educators, when they walk through the door with whatever issues that are affecting those children, we expect our educators to work miracles. And sometimes we can't, but we can with the support. You know, we know that there is a, a fentanyl and an opioid problem in our entire state, in our schools. We know that mental health issues uh, have skyrocketed. We know that 
gunfire has replaced car accidents as the number one cause of injury death for children. These are all challenges that we have to face. But there are ways to address those challenges. And right now, this year, we have funds to make historic investments in education. It is truly phenomenal what we can do. Once in a generation opportunities require once in a generation investments. And that's why that I proposed over the next two years that we increase teacher pay by 18%. That $46,000 salary is the state part. We know that local supplements make it higher than that. We can make it so this can be a decent living. We know that teachers aren't going to make a ton of money, but we need to make it a decent living so we can attract more of them to come. And we know that it's important for us to have bus drivers to get children to school on time, to have counselors and nurses and a way to get people to see psychologists in school is why we're proposing a 9.5% increase for non-certified personnel, why, why we're proposing a $1,500 retention bonus this year for all school personnel, why we are expanding greatly and proposing expanding greatly the Teaching Fellows Scholarship Program where we say to a student, hey, if you decide to go into teaching, and agree to give us four years, we'll pay for your four years of education. Those are the kind, restoring master's pay. We're, we're, we're recommending restoring master's pay. We're doing more than I can even think of right now, but we are making these historic investments and challenging the General Assembly to do the same. And we've got a choice. Are we going to take more corporate tax breaks? We're going to do more tax breaks for the wealthiest among us? Or are we going to invest in education? Truly, that is the choice right now. And I think that CEOs across this state want us to invest in education from cradle to career. They want us to invest in early childhood education and child care because it's a triple play. It's quality early childhood education for the child. It's a way for the parent to be able to work, to bring money for the family. And it's a way for that business owner to get that employee, that parent that they need for their business. And we know our community colleges and our universities need additional help too to help the cradle to career path to make sure that everybody in this state has the opportunity. And it starts with public schools. Just like my mom. Just like my mom. I was telling Superintendent Oakley that I still have people come up to me and say I want to pay you a compliment I'll think it's about me they'll say your mom's the best teacher I ever had <laughs> and you know that matters and I can name all of my teachers that I had throughout elementary school I'm grateful for my public school education I'm grateful for my children's public school education and I want all children to get a great education and to help us overcome these challenges that we know that we have so, you know, what I'd ask you today is to talk to these legislators. I know that Senator Garrett's going to be carrying the banner and saying that we need to make these investments. Yes, there is going to be a debate about how much it's going to be, but we set a good bar. I mean, don't you want to be number one in the Southeast in teacher pay? Of course we do. Of course we do. And we can do it because we have unprecedented funds to be able to do it. So there's a lot more that I can talk to you about, but I, I, I know that I've got to get back to Raleigh, and I want to say hello to some of you all out there. And I also want to give the media an opportunity to ask some questions. So I will throw it open. We don't have anybody else, do we, Sam, that we need? OK. So let me throw it open to the media. We'll go ahead and get that, that I, not out of the way. We will address <laughs> questions from our, our beloved media before we, before we do that. So. Go ahead, guys. All right. I am so grateful that 
teachers are willing to do that, and so many of them are, they should not be. We should make sure that we have all of the supplies necessary. One thing this does, and it's an important thing I neglected to say, but there's been a court case going on for decades that the Supreme Court has decided that every child is entitled to a sound basic education. And we now know what that means because there is a remedial plan that the court has adopted that would cover things like that but also provide for more counselors and nurses and bring pay up and make sure we bring more teachers and teach pay and respect to teachers. So that investment, my budget fully funds that plan, fully funds every, every dollar that was recommended. And so we want to make sure that our teachers are supported. It's not just pay, it's support. And thank your mom for teaching. So one, one reason is we're the best state in the country. And, and, and we, you know, we, we were founded, we were founded really on the basis of educa education. We were the first state in the country to open the doors to the first public university. But I think it's going to be critical. I think this, this challenge that all of our educators are facing is throughout the country. It's certainly not specific to, to North Carolina. But we know that we're going to have to do more to attract and retain the teachers that we have. We have had some really good teachers who've said, I've had enough. I just can't take it anymore. And I've talked to them. And, and, I, and I do know what the challenges are. So we have to meet the moment. We, we have to make sure that we send this signal that this is a respected profession, that we want people to go into it. I like teaching fellow scholarships because when we first started them, I was in the state legislature, I remember sitting on the interview panels, panels for these students who were trying to get them, and I said, we're getting the top of the class. We're getting the very best people who want to be teachers because they want these teaching fellow scholarships. That's the kind of thing we need to do to lift the profession, to fill all of these vacancies, and get the best that we can. We also need to make sure our teachers are diverse and, and uh, reflect who we are as a state and who our stu student population is because we've seen scientific proof over and over that not only do students of color do better when the teacher workforce is diverse, all students do better. Well, the first one, I will be making an announcement on that tomorrow. They did make some changes in that legislation from the last time that I vetoed it. On, on, on the bill that eliminates gun permits, um, you know, I think we need to be doing what we can to respect the Second Amendment and people's rights to bear arms, but also working to keep guns out of the hands of children, out of the hands of criminals, and out of the hands of people who are a danger to themselves or others. And I've convened groups of sheriffs, police chiefs, mayors, all of the, I, I, I've interviewed healthcare professionals because this has become a public health issue. Uh, I, inter, I inter, uh, had an exchange with trauma surgeons in emergency rooms. And one of them said to me, when you're putting pressure on a wound, bullet wound in a four-year-old, it changes your life. I think that this legislation that uh, completely eliminates uh, the permit for a pistol, which would make it easier for people who commit domestic violence to be able to buy guns, I think it, that's going backward. I think we need to go forward uh, to try to reduce gun violence while respecting the Second Amendment. Well, 
Well, yeah, I talked to, look, one of the students talked to me about this gun issue today. So we had sort of a, a back and forth. He was right on it and, knew, and uh, understood about it. I, I really enjoyed going into two classrooms that help students with basics of, of jobs we really need to fill. I went into a nursing uh, area that, that were giving students fundamentals of, of nursing, and I went to a computer lab. Uh, we need people in the area of consumer, consumer, uh, computer science, cybersecurity. We need more healthcare professionals. The fact that this high school is trying to spark interest among these young people uh, in the computer science class, they were telling me how they were uh, doing their uh, programming and they were doing it in a way they were making games, they were having fun to do it, but actually they were learning the fundamentals of the computer science. In the nursing, they, they were working on the eye and uh, treatments for, for the eye. Those, those are the kinds of things that get students excited, and it was great. I'm, I always feel much better about our public schools when I come out of one, and, and I'm really grateful to have that opportunity today. Thank you guys for being here. I appreciate it.